Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. So we have another challenge from bugbountyhunter.com. This one is an easy cross-site scripting challenge with the title, can you find any cross-site scripting? No HTML tags allowed. But first, real quick guys, this video is made possible thanks to bugbountyhunter.com. Thank you very much. I've been able to have a, m a member's account for this website and I can wholeheartedly recommend it. Sean's methodology is freaking amazing. Uh, we're going to get into this challenge without any further ado. Let's get right into it, guys. This is a simple website application designed to show you some interesting facts on various animals. I've made sure that the search field does not allow for HTML tags, but is it secure? Question mark. How many cross-site scripting vulnerabilities can you find? Now I've found two, I don't know if you guys can find more, but there are a lot in there, a lot of possibilities that is, of course. So let's get right into it. Now the first thing we can see is we have a title here, search for your type of animal, and we have try something like zebra. So we'll try zebra because first we want to get to know the functionality of this website. Okay, so zebras are single hoofed animals, blah, blah, blah. This basically describes the type of animal that we typed in here. So if we type a bear, for example, couldn't find it. Um, let's say horse, couldn't find it, but we have something else. We have a text here, we could not find anything for horse. <clears throat> now there are a couple of things that we can try here. What Sean did is he created a filter on this website. So as the developer of the website, it's possible to insert certain HTML tags, like say for example an image with an unknown or a broken source. We can see that it actually does translate into an image, but when we try to do our JavaScript event handler in there, so image source equals X, again an unknown source on error equals alert. If we try to do this, now let me quickly copy that, so if we try to do that, no, I didn't copy it, I just selected it, good going me. If we try to do that, we can see that it doesn't actually give us a cross-site scripting pop-up. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do, of course, is look in the source code. And in the source code, we can see that it actually has been left out. Now, what you can do is, of course, you can go online, you can look for various cross-site scripting attack factors, but those aren't going to bring you very far in this challenge. Because what's actually happening is there is a filter for complete HTML tags in here. So that means that if we compose our HTML tag again with the image source equals X, and then we add the event handler on error equals alert, but we don't close our tag. If we do this, we can see that something else is happening in the source code. We can see that we have an on error equals alert and a diff paste behind that. Now, of course, this isn't proper JavaScript code, so this isn't going to work, but we can see that we can actually terminate this by putting in a double quote. Now, if we put in like this, like image equals uh, source equals X and then on error equals double quotes alert, now what the browser is going to do is it's actually going to try and fix that HTML tag for us. And that's going to result in, but uh, we have our pop-up. So that's one of the cross-site scripting attacks in here. As you can see, the browser is actually trying to complete this HTML tag for us. It found some invalid mumbo jumbo in there, but that's okay because our cross-site scripting already executed. Now there's another type of vulnerability in here and as a tester I always say that you should go through your website very very thoroughly. Nothing holds more true than in this case. So if we go and look at our website we can try and search for a term but we can also try and leave this empty. We can actually try to provide no search query and when we do that we can see that we get some other results. So if we inspect the results in here, if we inspect the source code, we can see some comments in here and in here it says P equals a zero. This gives us a pretty good indication that there is another hidden parameter at work here. So if we add in an ampersand sign because we add another parameter in here and the name of the parameter is P as we've gained from the source code. And if we enter a value in here, we can see that it's actually being reflected into the source code. 
Now we can also try a basic cross-site scripting attack factor in here, image source equals x, on error equals alert. But this is not going to work and not because it's going to get filtered out because as you guys will see, it actually does get reflected pretty well into the page. But what's happening is that it's being reflected into a comment, into an HTML comment. So we can basically subvert this by ending our HTML comment before we start our tag. So again, we have our tag here and this is where we start. And if we put in the same characters that we see here, so dash dash and a greater than sign, this is to indicate to the browser that our comment ends here. We can actually insert our cross-site scripting attack factor into the website and ta-da, we have our second attack factor. So that's been basically how you can do the uh, attacks on here. But I've gained a few lessons from doing this um, attack as well, of course. First of all, never simply rely on basic attack factors. Always try to find out what's going on in the background because otherwise it's pretty much impossible to find these attack factors where um, basically it only checks for full HTML tags because all of the attack factors that you'll find online will basically have full HTML tags. And there are some really cool other things that you should do like always check the source code, always check the JavaScript code because there might be some hidden parameters and those might lead to cross-site scripting and tag factors. Now, why is this so important, you might ask? Because guys, these hidden parameters, these will be very much less tested than the rest. So not a lot of hackers are going to find these. And if you go through the trouble of finding them, you're going to notice that they are much less hardened than the other parameters that are clearly visible to you. That's why you'll often find more attacks on there, more issues, more valid issues, and less duplicates. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. We're almost at five and a half thousand subscribers, which is freaking amazing, you guys. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. The rat is in the house and he's not leaving anytime soon. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.